anyways, so we're just singing this song right before we came on. But anyway, that is to say, today is an amazing day. Welcome to the Kange household of faith. Guys, another day to be in the presence of the Lord where we are going to bring to you the word of restoration in the spirit of faith, right? You know, I'm super excited. Three more days. Three more go. days. Man, I, I, I can't even begin to explain the countdown. It has been like whoosh. <laughs> Three more days. God is so Three. good. God is so good. Three more days. So we are having a, a, a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. He's been saying a whole lot of beautiful things. And so we are looking forward to actually getting there. Pastor Pauline, have you realized that God, <laughs> you know, this, this is what I've been thinking about, right? Okay. That, that God is everywhere. And, and in his sovereignty, he can, he can also affix a location uh -huh. for his people to come and meet with him. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, I'm not saying God is not in, in, you know, in any other place. But believe me, he is in several other places. Um, but, but we are going to meet with him over there. <laughs> right? Hallelujah. This Looking forward to whims with so much Hallelujah. excitement. Yes, 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 we are. We are, we are, we are, we are. We Welcome, are. Pastor Evelyn. Welcome, George. Welcome, Pastor Peggy. Yay. Hello, Pastor Comfort. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, Minister Yvonne Marsha. Welcome, Pastor Eunice. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you on. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, First Lady. Efua. Welcome. Thank you, Pastor Evelyn. Hello, hello. Oh, yeah. I know I'm not the only one that is this excited. I am so excited. That's right. So, so by the way, Pastor Peggy, I'm loving this your picture. This your. Uh, it's beautiful. It's it's nice. You know, the, she the, looks like she's from my nation. The color plays. It's really beautiful. Bless you, bless you. Good to have you on. Looking very Navajo-ish. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hi, Minister Lisa. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Hi, mm -hmm. Minister Moira. Oh, yes. Good it's to been see a little you. while, right? I yes. Think. Yes. Hey, yes, Doc. Yes, yes, God is good. Welcome. Another day, another day, another Welcome, day. Welcome, Pastor Robert Ngale. Welcome, Minister Daisy. Hello, oh, Senegal no, no, no. Rising. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, Mr. Pauline, tell us a little. What should people expect Friday? <laughs> the glory. <laughs> expect the glory of God. Come ready. I hope you are increasing in capacity. You Three more days to go. Spend time praying in tongues. Just pray in tongues until you pray in tongues. Because I'm telling you, Friday night is going to be explosive. We are coming in. We hit the ground running. There will be no time to warm you up and coax you and encourage you. and uh. So come encouraged. Come fired up. Come prayed up. Because we are hitting the ground running. We are going to have an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. It's Women in Ministry Summit. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what that means is, as you're coming, you should at least have a mindset of a child of God in ministry. I am in ministry. I'm a woman in ministry. I'm a man in ministry. You have to have that mindset as you come. You may not know exactly what God has called you to do, but at least you understand that you are called because Jesus shed his blood on the cross to buy you back from the hands of the devil. You are, have been redeemed. You are no longer your own. You belong to Jesus Christ. And by reason of that truth, you know that he saved you so that you can be part of the kingdom and the workforce of, of heaven to bring into manifestation the, the expansion the dominion of the king here in this earth. So you are not just passing through. If God wanted you to just pass through, the moment you got born again, you would have been taken, zapped to heaven. You are still in the earth because you are part of the workforce. So you are called. Come with that mindset. Even if you don't know specifically what you are supposed to be doing for God, 
at least you know that you are a royal priesthood, you are a chosen generation, called and set apart to show forth the praises of the one who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So your testimony of salvation is already a manifestation of the call of God on your life. Telling somebody how Jesus set you free, how Jesus healed you, how Jesus delivered you, that's you engaging in ministry. Being able to serve somebody else, that is ministry because ministry is service. Ministry is your obedience to the instructions that God gives you. So are you a man in ministry? Come. Are you a woman in ministry? Come. We are waiting for you at WIMS 2021. And That's the right. fire of God will be available. Amen. Yeah. So let's pray and get started. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Father. We, you, Lord, we magnify we you, Lord God. We pray for utterance today. We pray for understanding. We ask, O oh God, that you will lead us in the paths of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Bring us into a place of fellowship with you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 For your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Be exalted, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Peter. Yes, ma'am. Jesus said in John chapter 9, yes. He said, I must walk the works of him who called me while it is day. John chapter 9, verse 4. I must, I have to read it. All right. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 9 verse 4. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I'll read that again. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. You know, there was a day and time when we, we believed that we, the, because we gave our lives to Jesus, we're invincible. I know. You know, yeah. it was very abnormal mm. to see someone who is born again die at the age of 40. Die at the age of 35. Die at the age. And, and it, it, it didn't occur to us that Jesus died at the age of 33. You know, but it, it was a strange phenomenon. It is not that strange anymore. No. But um, I'm saying this to say that with every passing minute, mm -hmm. there is a greater awareness and a greater consciousness of this truth that we don't have all the time we think we do have. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I must walk the walks of him who sent me while it is day. Mm -hmm. He had an understanding that you can only walk during the day because night is coming. Right. And there are two ways you can look at night time. Mm -hmm. Night time can be when you check out of this world, yes. you transition into the next, into eternity. Mm -hmm. Or night time can be if Jesus returns. Yes. So whichever one is going to happen first, you don't have that much time. You don't have that much time. Mm -hmm. So we truly don't have 
as much time as we think we do. Sometimes, you know, like like scripture says, you, you get up and you say, oh, tomorrow I'll do this and then I'll do that and then I'll do that. But you don't realize, you, time is not in your hands like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so scripture admonishes us to say, God willing, Come on. I will do this. Proverbs 27 verse 1 says, do not boast about tomorrow because you don't even know what the day will bring forth. Right. This is not um, a statement to make us live in a certain level of skepticism or uncertainty because we, we may not know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow and we know he has us in the palm of his hands. Mm -hmm. That is where our confidence and our faith rely. Yeah. But... To think that you, you have the world all figured out and you have time in your hands like that is a, a grave error. So we have to walk in this consciousness, even as we're preparing for wimps. That, that consciousness that Jesus had, that will make him say, I must walk the works of him who sent me while it is day. While it is day. Guys, while it is day. Because you can be walking... But if you don't have the consciousness of this truth that there is night time coming and so you have to make sure your work is done during the day, you will take your sweet time. Procrastination will be your best friend. You will keep postponing things for later that you're supposed to do now. Jesus walked in that consciousness and the, 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 the awareness that someone sent him. He was sent by the father. And he did his best to walk the works of the one who sent him while it was day. Jesus walked the earth for 33 years. And he accomplished so much. And he, when he was living, he said something in John chapter 14. He said, the works that I do, you shall do. And greater works than this shall you do because I go to the Father. Jesus has returned to the Father from the earth realm. And he has left us here to continue the work that he was doing for the Father. And he says we are not just going to do the work, but greater works than the one that he did, we will do. How many of us have even started the one he did before we are talking about the greater? Consciousness of the work. The consciousness of the work. My prayer for you and for myself is that we will grow into a place of a greater consciousness, a greater awareness of this truth that there is nighttime and there is daytime. And we want to make sure that we finish our work and finish strong while it is day. Paul puts it this way. He was talking to Timothy. I'm going to read that scripture. Oh, hallelujah, my God. I mean, this, this is an elaborate letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. I want us to look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. We are called into the kingdom for work. We are called into the kingdom for work. Man of God, woman of God, hear us tonight. You are called into the kingdom for work. Amen. We are called into the kingdom for work. When we read Matthew chapter 25, Jesus is giving a parable about the kingdom of heaven being likened as unto a man who is about to travel and he left talents with his servants and he expected them to multiply their talents mm -hmm. by trading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are called into the kingdom for work. He tells another parable in Matthew chapter 20 about the kingdom of heaven being likened as unto a householder who went out into the field and saw some people standing idle in the field. And he asked them, why are you standing here idle? And they said, because no one has hired us. And he hired them to do work. We are called into the kingdom for work. 
and he negotiated their pay with them individually. Because God is not unrighteous. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 says, Our God is not unrighteous to forget your, lab, your love and labor, your work and labor of love that you have shown in that you have ministered unto the saints and do minister. God is not unrighteous to forget. So he is a rewarder of anyone who diligently seeks him. We have to walk in this awareness that we are called into the kingdom for work. So Paul is talking to, to Timothy, and I want to read portions of this chapter. And I pray that it will be a letter to you as well tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm going to read from verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You know, when God was speaking to Joshua, after Moses died, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you arise. <laughs> yep. it, it can sound very insensitive when you are trying to mourn the death of your leader, the death of your father in the Lord, the death of your mentor, the death of someone that you held high in esteem. And then God comes to you and says, get up, it's time to move forward. Right. It sounds insensitive. Can't you see I'm grieving? Can't you see I'm in pain? Can't you give me time to mourn? And God is saying, you've mourned long enough. Get up. Right. This is what I need for you to do. Mm -hmm. And the same way I was with Moses, I will be with you. But you have to be strong and very courageous. Right. So P Paul is speaking to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And he's telling him, thou my son, therefore, mm -hmm. be strong in the grace I don't want to go read chapter 1 to find out why he's saying, therefore, that you can do on your own, right? Yeah. Now, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So Paul is talking to Timothy and is bringing him into a conscious awareness of the discipleship program that is in the kingdom of God. The gospel of the kingdom is a gospel of purpose. Mm -hmm. God saved you by the death of Jesus on the cross, but he didn't translate you immediately to heaven. He kept you in the earth for purpose, for work. Mm -hmm. So what are you living for? If you are just simply living to, to, to believe God for your healing, believe God for your finances, believe God for your children, believe God for your spouse, and then believe God for your job, and that's it. No, that is not enough. That is not the reason why. Those other things are benefits that come along, but they are not the reason why we are here. You are here for purpose. You are here for purpose. There is a kingdom agenda for which you are still living. Have you discovered the purpose for which you are living? Are you walking in that purpose? He's telling Timothy, the things that I have, you have heard from me. So he was intentional about committing in the hands of Timothy mm -hmm. precious information, mm -hmm. precious truths. Mm -hmm. And he said, those things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, that you should also do same to commit to others. And you have to commit them to people who are faithful. It, it takes a certain level of involvement to, to discover faithful people. Oh, come on, yes. <laughs> it takes a certain level of involvement to discover faithful people. And faithful, you, someone, you cannot qualify somebody to be faithful overnight. Mm -mm. There has to have been time. Yeah. There has to have been consistency diligence there has to there has to be a track record something with which you can measure faithfulness right. it means a person is doing the same thing continuously or they are there day in day out mm -hmm. they have a routine and they're keeping to that routine mm -hmm. then you can it doesn't matter whether it rains or it, it snows they are there whether they are happy or sad they are there whether they lose someone or they they they, they, they gain something they are there even if they are crying real tears, they are still there. Right. 
then you can conclude this person is faithful. So Paul is saying, the things you have heard from me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So you see continuity, you see legacy, you see discipleship. Because there is a kingdom agenda, we are here for work. Mm. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. If there were not going to be any challenges, mm -hmm. Paul would not tell Timothy, endure hardness. No. <laughs> it means in the process of you engaging in ministry or doing work, kingdom work, mm -hmm. you will face challenges. Some of the assignments will be tough. Your mind will tell you, I can't do this. I'm not equipped for this. I, maybe God should look for somebody else. And some of you have quit several times. I know I quit so many times. But Paul is telling Timothy, and your hardness as a good soldier. Many of us have seen movies, or some of you are veterans, some of so, you are so, in the military. So quitting, quitting is like, it's like abandoning the work. Right. But still staying around. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. you, qu you quit several times, but you don't throw in the tower. You, okay. You're still there. Right. God, I can't do this. I can't do this. I don't think I can do this. But the next day, you are still there. I, I don't think I can go one more day, but you've been going three more weeks. You see what I mean? And you know that the devil is not the location for you. No, you know the devil is not the location for That's you. That's right. That's right. Okay. So you endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Many of us have watched movies and we've seen the training that soldiers have to go through. And sometimes some of those drill surgeons are very intentional to put them under rigorous training and as if they are Agents of darkness sent to make them quit. <laughs> yeah. Very tough, rigorous training. Mm -hmm. And they're actually telling them, are you going to give up now? And you have to scream, no, surgeon, no. You're not giving up. <laughs> you're telling yourself, if I lay down on the bed, I'm not getting back up. <laughs> I'm just going to stay there. But you find yourself getting right back up. Because scripture says, endure hardness. So there will be tough situations. Some of you may be going through very difficult mm. situations as mm. we speak. Mm. Mm. Even with the coming of whims, it's like challenges are coming from all angles and the enemy is working over time to make sure you don't make it. You have to know how to push back. In your personal life, maybe your health is a challenge. You have to know how to push back and stay on the word of God. Keep declaring by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. It doesn't matter the intensity of the pain. You just keep declaring it. There are days when the only prayer that you will know how to pray will be help. But even on that day, you know that the strength of God is available. God makes his grace. Oh my God. That grace that keeps on gracing. Quitting is not an option, guys. I want you to look at verse 4. We are in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 4 says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. No man. You will not see people in the war front talking about I want to go to the beach <laughs> because they are very aware of their environment they are aware of the times and seasons they are aware of their circumstance they know that they are behind enemy lines they know that they have an enemy they are aware that they are in a battle front in which the situation is you either kill or be killed right. they don't have the luxury of thinking about the beach they are not crossing their legs and eating bread no there's no time for that if they have to eat they eat standing they have a weapon on one hand and they are watching so so first of all I, I think this is what it, it boils down to is the child of God at war all of his life 
That's a good question. That, that, I, I think that's a question that needs to be looked into because mm -hmm. very often we, we, we know that God is a healer. Mm -hmm. We know that God is a deliverer. We know that he will send his angels, right? Mm -hmm. He will give his angels charge. Yes. Right? Over us. And, and so you kind of look for a life of bliss. You look for a life with no circumstances going south. Mm -hmm. No situations arising. No matters mm -hmm. arising. No, none of that. Mm -hmm. That's not what you look for. You look for ease. Right? Mm -hmm. You look for celebration. Mm -hmm. You look for the blessing. Mm -hmm. Right? And so it is not typical that the culture of you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed also translates into you will have challenges. <laughs> so, so the child of God isn't prepared. Mentally, the child of God isn't prepared. Culturally, and when I talk about cultural, I'm talking about the, the, the believer's culture, mm -hmm. the, the kingdom culture, that environment where believers dwell. It is not an environment that suggests one can be sick. Healing is talked about and it should be so much that, and it should be like that, mm -hmm. that one loses the consciousness that there could be sickness. But we don't realize that one gets healed because they were sick. <laughs> right. Right? Mm -hmm. So we are, you know, people are bewildered. Mm. that something went wrong right. and it, it it's like it tells negatively on God mm. well I am supposed to just be living a good life you are supposed to be providing that good life <laughs> the devil is the one who messes things up where have you been right where did you go to? Where Dad, were you when he was messing the He people? came and did this. And you are the one who said that when people slept, the enemy came and saw tests. Clearly you have been sleeping. <laughs> because my job <laughs> is to enjoy the blessing. And your job is to provide it. And, and so it, it leaves us in that interesting place mm -hmm. where when something isn't going right, many believers do not know how to psychologically handle or mentally handle disappointment. Mm. If you understand that the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want, then you would also understand that there's no disappointment in your, disappointment in your world. Mm -hmm. So if you get disappointed, it is not that you're not hearing enough of the word. In fact, you're hearing enough of the word that you're shocked that there was a disappointment. Mm -hmm. But while you are at it, you missed some ingredients. You missed some pillars of the kingdom that have to do with one being relentless. Yes. You miss the pillars mm. that demand or, or, or equip the believer to be resilient. Not just Come relentless, on. but resilient. resilient. You know, um, you, you're missing out on the elements of grit. You know, mm. we, we are the ones who are unbreakable. Come on. That means yes. things are going to come to try to break us. But we are unbreakable. Amen. We are untouchable. Yes. We are incorruptible. Come on. Right? This, this, this demonic um, um, schemes don't affect us. Keyword affect. Yeah. No weapon from the fashion against you shall prosper. prosper. Keyword. It shall not prosper. No, it shall not prosper. <laughs> it shall not. It, is it not shall going be to... formed, but it will not prosper. Yeah, so, so if as children of God we can see that, then it changes everything. Yes. And I can see where Joshua used to be. 
where he told himself his man of God was untouchable and, and so on and so forth. And there are people who are listening to us right now whose concept is the same. Not, not, not only my man of God is untouchable, my woman of God is untouchable. Mm -hmm. and, and we get that. But you have to define what realm carries that reality. Yeah. It, is, it is a perfect reality in the spirit. Yes. But not necessarily perfect mentally. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily perfect physically. physically. So if we understand that, then we can engage in warfare appropriately. Yes. We can engage in warfare appropriately. And so God is letting us know that the reason why whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world mm -hmm. is exactly that. That trials and temptations will not overtake us. That's right. If we are passing through the waters, they are not going to drown That's us. That's right. Amen. If we are found in a fiery furnace, we will not be burned. Right? That is the word of God for us tonight. So we don't have, <laughs> there is no premise for regret mm -mm. because the path of God is forever straight. The ride may be bumpy in the natural, but in the spirit, God did not make a mistake. No, he didn't. <laughs> in the spirit, everything with God is perfect. It's a smooth sail. It's a smooth sail. <laughs> he says your light affliction. Which light is affliction. For the moment, yeah. Is working for you. No, wait. <laughs> no, wait. Key expression. Right? Working for you. Yes. Key expression. Working for you. Mm -hmm. So so we are very excited that it is working for us. It is. So the child of God sees levels and levels of being propelled because the things that happen to the child of God are stepping stones yes. <laughs> mm, for greater levels good. of glory. Right? Stepping, stone. stepping stones for greater levels of glory. And, and, and so if, if you're listening to us right now and, and maybe you have been misunderstanding all of your stepping stones. Mm -hmm. Right? Maybe you have been misunderstanding all of your stepping stones. You have been misunderstanding all of your challenges. You have been misunderstanding all of your trials. Mm. Right? You have been misunderstanding all of these elements that have come into your life to bring about the proper formation. Right. Right? To bring about the character of God, to bring about the divine nature. You know the word of God says we are partakers of, of his, his divine, divine nature. nature because yeah. of... Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Because that's what the Word of God says in, in, in the book of Peter, right? Mm -hmm. That because of the promises of God, we are coming into the divine nature of God. Yes. That is exciting, right? It says we have been given exceeding promises. Mm -hmm. And by these promises, we can come into. Yes. The divine nature of God. Okay, but why does God promise you anything? He promises you whatever he promises you so that when trials hit your door, you will remember that a lifeline from the future had been handed down Come to on. you. Amen. So the promises of God are a lifeline <laughs> pulling you into the future because it is through them that you get to enjoy, so to say, or experience his divine nature. Right? So you're able to say, hold on, I understand that trouble is going to come in two weeks, but by then, as I hang on these promises of God, I would come into the divine nature of God enough to overcome them. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I may not have that divine nature right now, you know, the, 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 quantity or quality of it to face mm -hmm. what's going to come tomorrow mm -hmm. but just hold on i'm just going to stick to the promises of god <laughs> i'm going to play mother hen you know i'm going to play mother hen come on i'm going to play mother <laughs> hen and just stay on the eggs right yes but my eggs are my word 
That's right. My eggs are my, my, my promises. So I'm, I'm going to sit on those promises. Yes. You know, just sit on the promises Amen. and just sit on the promises yes. and then sit on the promises. I, I, I remember listening. We were listening to Kenneth Hagin mm -hmm. as we were traveling one of those days. And he was saying, the moment a symptom comes from the north and hits you, you just remember the word of the Lord concerning healing and say, right. oh, please, this word responds to you. This word will put you right where you belong. That's right. Amen. And so symptoms come to try your resolve. Oh, did you hear that? Symptoms <laughs> come to try your resolve. Yeah. The, 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 the mistake that many children of God make is when that symptom comes, then a child of God will say something like, oh, I thought God healed me. Hey. The fact that you say, I thought God healed me, thought, past tense. It, it means that the... the, the <laughs> it means your current realization is that he did not. That means that the symptom just broke your result. Yes. But if in that moment you're able to say, oh, no, devil, wrong address. I'm <laughs> the healed of the Lord. That's it. You keep your resolve, you keep your confession, and that, that stupid stinking demon will recognize that this child of God is one who knows who they are in Christ Jesus, and they know what they have obtained. You know, we, we were having a dialogue earlier on, and I was talking to you about one of the things that God was saying to me, and uh, he said, my son, teach my word. Mm. Don't teach your expressions. I don't want your expressions. Express my word. Yes. And, and, and we're talking about it, just the dynamic of releasing the word of God in the face of any and every circumstance. Yes. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> and, and he was saying, remember that the earth was without form and void. It is what it is today because my word was spoken to it. Yeah. Right? Okay, so you keep speaking my word because my word will bring mm. everything down to its knees. Yes, amen. <laughs> ah, that's so sweet. The word of God will bring everything down to its and, knees. And, and he said to me, he said, when you don't express yourself but express my word, people will hear me speaking to them. But when you express yourself, they will hear you speaking to them mm -hmm. and you cannot change a person. That's right. So Ephesians chapter 4, 29, the yes. scripture says that when we speak, we should speak in such a way that we are communicating grace to our hearers. Right. And then um, I think it's Acts 20, 32, Paul was speaking to the uh, Ephesian leaders and he said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. I like the fact that he refers to the word of God as the word of his grace. Yeah. And that it has the ability to build you up and to give you an inheritance mm, among mm, them that are mm, sanctified. So mm, the word of God mm. is the word of grace. Mm, come on. When we release the word of God, we are releasing the word of grace. Yes. The, when you receive the word of God, you are receiving the word of grace. Mm. So the word comes with the ability to do. Right. You know, you talk about this and finally now you can. You know, the grace of God in, in, in it, its manifestations. Uh, the grace of God is not just limited to on, uh, you know, unmerited favor. That's one aspect of God's grace. But there are so many different aspects of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. One being the empowering, the uh, empowering nature of the word. Right. You know, God empowers you to be able to function like him. So the word of his grace, when you receive the word of grace, you're receiving the empowerment to do. You're receiving the empowerment to become what you're hearing. And the word of God declares that it gives you an inheritance mm. among them that are sanctified. Mm. So if I'm receiving the word of God, which is healing, by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed, I'm taking in that word, I'm taking in grace to walk in health. I'm taking in grace to express healing. Because thoughts become things, right? Right. And so when we begin to take hold of the word of God and put it in us out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouth will speak mm. and we'll be able to declare in alignment with the word of the Lord. Right. So it's interesting how we have to walk with that consciousness. There are so many scriptures littered throughout the word of God, Pastor Peter, that give us insight into this truth that we are overcomers. And because we are overcomers, 
the enemy, we are overcomers because we overcome something. We come over something. Mm -hmm. You know, the, so the, the, we have an enemy who is constantly moving to and fro, mm -hmm. seeking whomever he may devour. Mm -hmm. But because we have the word of God, we have an upper hand over him. You know, I was studying uh, um, something in, in, in the book of Genesis the other day. And just looking, I stumbled on this thing and it hit me differently this time. When God was speaking to Adam and Eve after the fall in Genesis chapter 3, yes. we, we realized that when God was talking to the woman, he said, you, your pain will be multiplied in childbearing. And he said, your desire will be to your husband and he will rule over you. That was the curse. Your desire will be to your husband and he will rule over you. And I began to look into different translations into, you know, how the different versions will put your, your desire will be to your husband. And it talked uh, in, in, in some of the, the translations, it is talking about um, the word desire there in the Hebrew. The word that was used there is the, the word for um, reaching out, stretching out. Mm -hmm. In other words, usurping or trying to come over. So you would want to dominate, but he would dominate over you. Meanwhile, before the fall, they were partners. They had a shared dominion over everything God had created. But as a result of the fall, now they are in competition over who will dominate the other. And then it's funny how when God was speaking to Cain in Genesis chapter 4, after Cain killed his brother, he said, I am not sure why you're offended, why you're upset, because your offering was not received. If you had done what is right, would you not have been accepted? Right. He said, but if you do not do what is right, sin lies at your door. Mm -hmm. And he used the same phrase that he used when talking to Eve about the curse. You have the ability to overpower, but this thing is coming at you. So the devil is there. He is doing his best to come at us, but we have what it takes to overpower. Mm -hmm. Now, walking in that consciousness, we recognize that we are able to, to revenge all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. Right. We are able to walk in dominion, in partnership with the Holy Ghost, because we have we have become partakers of his divine nature. Mm -hmm. And it is by that that we overcome darkness. It is by our God that we run through troops and we leap over walls. So when we begin to see through the eyes of God, looking into the word of God, we will see our circumstances differently. Amen. So instead of looking at it like, oh my goodness, I, I don't know when this is going to be over. Like you will say, you see opportunities. <laughs> We see opportunities and we don't see um, difficulties like, oh my God, I'm so looking forward to the day when all of this will be over. I'm so tired. On the contrary, when you look into the perfect law of liberty, liberty you begin to see those um, challenges as opportunities because when you overcome them, then that's one more testimony. One more testimony, and then one more testimony, and then one more testimony. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, walketh for us. And you mentioned the word walking. Mm -hmm. Walketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So the enemy may have meant it for evil, but God is standing around for our good as long as we cooperate with him. For we know it's that all things good. work together for the good of them that love him who are the called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. It is working for us a far more exceeding mm -hmm. and eternal weight of glory. Yes. While we look not at the things which are seen, mm -hmm. but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, they are subject to change, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yeah. 
So we are meant to overcome people. We are overcomers. Whatsoever yep. is born of God overcometh the world. Uh, and this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. Whatever you may be going through right now, Scripture says it's a light affliction. You may think you've been going through it for 30 sure. years. Scripture says it's just been a moment. It's just been a moment. And it's working for you a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Guess what? Romans chapter 8 verse 18. Paul says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is nothing to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Right. You know, Pastor Pauline, there's a, <laughs> there's a, there's a revealed My truth. God. Thank you, Lord. Out of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 17, that we, you know, we just read. The fact that in verse 18, it says we don't look at the things that we can see. Mm -hmm. In other words, we don't pursue what we can see. Yeah. We pursue what we do not see. Now, the irony here is you should pursue what looks like you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if, if one continues to think that mortality is what defines them, then they go after what is seen. Right. But when you begin to realize that immortality mm -hmm is your nature then you begin to seek for things that are beyond what you see that's right you begin to look for what is beyond the heavens you know what has been kept for you you look forward to your mansions you look forward to you know god telling you well done good and faithful seven oh, yes and, and because right of that it shifts how you behave right yes it makes you focus on the work like yes. we began to say, yes. you know, when we started out. Now you focus on the walk more than you're focusing on when am I getting a new house. Right. So a new house is, is a reward yes. for the work. It's a derivative from the walk. Yes. Right? Every other thing shall be added when you are a seeker of the, the kingdom. kingdom. Every other Every thing. Every other thing. So when you seek things, the chances are you won't get them. And you will lose your soul. And you'll be chasing shadows from pillar to post. Right? So you have to be in that place where you go after what doesn't perish. Right. Amen. Right? We are also told that we shouldn't go after money. Mm -hmm. To try to put it in containers and save it and so on and so forth. Because there are agents of this world that will look for them mm. and corrupt them. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that money can be paper. <laughs> there are things that eat paper. Right. Money can be the other things that money is. And there are things that will eat those things. Mm -hmm. But he says, let your treasure be that which is above. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. As immortals, you know, that conversation should be had. Immortals. Immortals, <laughs> immortals, immortals. Just think about it, child of God. Just think about it. I'm immortal. Immortal, immortal. So by the time you transition from this world, you realize, oh, I've put on immortality. Mm. So we behave the way we are behaving depending on whether we know what we are. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you know, having this conversation on, on what's your behavior towards problems. Do you see them working for you? Do you realize that all things work together for good? Mm -hmm. You know, the, what, 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 what is your perception of, of, about problems? Do you know how to take care of your body and not neglect it? Because it's not just about when something goes wrong. Right. It is also the preventive measures. Yes. Because we want to carry the, gro the glory. We, yes. <laughs> we, we have to carry the glory. We have to live long enough to carry the glory. Because yeah. if you have long an assignment enough. on your life, yeah. 
but you don't take care of the body, mm -hmm. your spirit man will not be able to carry out that assignment. Your body is your earth suit. Yeah. You are only able to function in this natural world because you have a physical body. So this is your earth suit. You have to be able to manage your earth suit well in order to survive and live healthy enough to do the assignment mm -hmm. that your spirit man is supposed to accomplish in the earth it's like if you go to 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 space you have to be properly suited for that environment mm -hmm. if your suit has a problem guess what is going to happen to you wrong gear wrong results <laughs> so in the same manner your body is your earth suit it is what gives you the ability to function in the earth so you have a responsibility to take care of it so that your spirit man who is the real you can accomplish the purpose for which god released you into the earth to accomplish you know you you you, you teach a course in school of ministry is um, um new testament survey and and you talk about matthew mark luke and john and the the the, the symbols and the analogies that these different books represent you know the man the ox the 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 lion and the eagle mm -hmm. and we we find that in the book of revelation we see it again in the book of ezekiel yes. we're talking about the, the beasts with the four faces that are before the very throne of god and we see that these things are representation of how the human being is supposed to operate in the earth mm -hmm. jesus operated that way and he expects us to operate that way because it's a manifestation of your humanity your divinity in humanity so the consciousness of this truth that you are a man, Jesus kept saying the son of man, the son of man referring to himself because he was aware that he was a human being when he walked the face of the earth. Jesus cried, Jesus was hungry, Jesus, you know, he, he expressed emotions like any regular human being. He had to be submitted to the, the climatic conditions of the earth realm. So he was aware of that. But in the earth realm, he functioned as a lion because he was conscious of the dominion that he has. The spirit of God coming upon him, he was able to, so you find the straight away, straight away he did this, and then he did this power in his word, he declared things and they were established because the lion is the king of the forest, right? Yeah. So you, you see him in his kingly role and that's who we are supposed to be. We are kings and priests. Yes. We are able to, to, to reign and rule in the earth. God said he's given us dominion. You know, when he created man, he said, let them have dominion, replenish, subdue, right? And, and, and that is the, the analogy of the lion. Then you have the, the ox. When you are conscious of your, your authority and how you function as a king, you have to be aware that that anointing was put on your life so you can serve. Mm -hmm. Because the ox is a representation of servanthood, service. So all of that anointing is so you can wash feet. When you are conscious of that, you don't get puffed up, feeling like, oh, yeah, I just, I just made my hand like this, and everybody was slain. So now you are the thing that has arrived. Nobody else can talk to you. And you have to put your feet up. People polish your shoe. You can't touch anything else. No, that consciousness of service, yes, you have authority. You function as a lion, but you have to be aware also that you are an ox. The reason for that anointing is so you can wash feet. It's so you can serve. You know, and then don't be so conscious of your humanity that is like, oh, every, it becomes an excuse. Like, I'm human. You do something, somebody is trying to tell you, well, you called on to a higher standard as a born again child of God. You are partakers of the divine nature. You say, I bet we are human. I'm just human. I'm j it becomes the excuse to just live anyhow. You can't just let the devil, you know, bombard you left and right. Your, your sickness is slapping you upside down the head. And you can't say anything because you're telling yourself you're human. No. You are an eagle. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. So we see all of these analogies in, in scripture. And I love the way you teach it in, in, in school of ministry. It, it shows us that we, we are not one-sided. We have this multi-sided thing with us, just like our father. And that's how Jesus lived and walked in the earth. The consciousness of who he was in these four dimensions. So it enables us to be able to function properly, carry out our assignments. So as a human being, you have a responsibility to take care of this body. Because if this body deteriorates, it doesn't matter how much your, your spirit man is full of the anointing. <laughs> Elisha's bones resurrected a dead person, but he died. 
it doesn't matter how much anointing is sitting in your spirit man if your body deteriorates to the point where it cannot carry your spirit man you will exit the earth without finishing your assignment so we have to be aware of that and know when to you know what to do to address our humanity and what to do to address our divinity because you you are manifesting the divine in the human realm as a born again child of god wow interesting you know um th this is how the word of god puts it in second corinthians chapter four verse eight i, I want to start reading from verse eight mm. but you know it says we are troubled on every side yet not distressed mm -hmm. There is, a, there is a, a certain capacity that is required for you to be troubled and not be distressed. Hmm. Oh, yes. You can say that again. So, so, so the thing is this. The Word of God says, whatsoever you yield yourself or whomsoever you yield yourself, servants to obey. Right? That person that seven, person seven to, become, become. to whom? So, so, yeah. so this is the thing. When you say, I'm human, you're declaring where your strength is coming from. Hmm. You may not think about it. Maybe yes. you didn't process it like that. But the moment you say, I'm human, that's what you are saying. Right. So uh, um, uh, it's important to, to be forthcoming because your mind is on the finished work on the cross. So it is better to say, I can't believe I did that. Oh, oh no. I wasn't looking forward to doing that. Right. And I look forward to doing better because you're focused on his divine nature. I mean, yes. look at what the word of God says. It says, you know, we have been given this exceeding great promises yes. so that what? Thank you, Jesus. Right? So we may partake of his divine yeah. nature. So anyone who isn't considering what Jesus did on the cross, anyone who isn't considering the finished work on the cross, the promises of God, eternity, right? is shortchanging themselves because it is with that consideration that dry bones get raised mm -hmm. it is with that consideration that the dead are brought back to life it is with that consideration that the sick get healed it is with that consideration that we are saved it is with mm -hmm. that consideration that will come into abundance it yes. is with that consideration yes. right yes. and so and so we put our mind on things above that's right Wait, I, I, okay so let me read this again we are troubled verse 8 on every side yet not distressed distressed mm -hmm. what distressed we are perplexed but not in despair in, in other words there is no unbelievable thing <laughs> you can come and tell me and it renders me an unbeliever Oh, <laughs> you know, like That's someone can one. say, oh, my God, that is very unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> OK, fine. But it shouldn't throw you off course. Yeah. Right. It shouldn't throw you off course. OK, so it also goes on and, and it says persecuted. But not forsaken. forsaken. How can you leave? in the love of God and get a sense of being intensely accepted that people are persecuting you. Wow. Only in Jesus. Only in Jesus. Only in Jesus. That's when you look at the things which are not seen. <laughs> and, and, and that is why I believe so much Ooh, in the encapsulating ability of the Come grace on. of God. Amen. The Amen. grace of God will encapsulate you. No weapon formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. Come on. It doesn't matter the tongue that rises oh, against Rabbi, you. It, there is condemnation that is scheduled for it. <laughs> In fact, the word of God says this is the inheritance, inheritance. of the servants Come of God. Come on. And our righteousness is of him. My God. Thank you. And so, Jesus. of course, when you begin to look at these things, you're like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast, Cast down, down but, but not, not destroyed. destroyed. We are of them to whom 
problems become stepping stones. Yes. Amen. That is our story. That's it. You were poisoned. How did you get here? They that of the Lord don't get destroyed <laughs> because of poisonous substances. You need to take in anything deadly, Isha by no means. Isha by no means help them. And and so that is the <laughs> that is that is where we are. You 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 can look at Abigail in the word of God and say, How did you survive that crazy man? <laughs> I mean, there are people who are listening to me right now. They are wondering, how am I going to survive this crazy man? Mm -hmm. And God is saying, I shall give you a mouth. I shall give you wisdom Come on. that no one can gain sick. No resist. No in resist. In the name of Jesus. First of all, that her crazy husband had cautioned everyone. Mm -hmm. But somehow, the wisdom of God. Yes knew how to direct her she come moved on. out of the house and got to david in time come on amen. so david would not do something he's not meant to do mm. a big girl's actions saved her household saved soldiers who would have died mm -hmm. saved david from from staining his hands with blood mm -hmm. and my god in a time and a season where there were no cell phones <laughs> When you put it like that. <laughs> oh, no, there's no other way of putting it. Because that is what the word of God is saying. Persecuted, Ooh. but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. not destroyed. I don't know that Hallelujah. the person came and told him, listen, David is 20 minutes away. Or David is 30 minutes away. <laughs> David is, David is, oh, God, what am I going to do now? It's just 30 minutes away. He's like, no. You can see that clearly she, she operated from peace. She operated with tranquility. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing. She spoke to the king. <laughs> she spoke to the king. Yes. Because it was not the king who was coming to her house in mm. the natural. I mean, here we are talking about natural things. Persecution is in the natural. Yes. Troubled or natural. Perplexed, natural. But wait. There is something beyond this. There is something beyond every child of God. You know, what we are seeing is just physical, but there's something more to you and I, child of God. There's something Amen. more to us. We have this treasure in earth and vessel. Oh. That the excellency of the power may be of him and not of us. Yeah. Yes. That is the word of God. So someone may be looking at you and all they're seeing is a physical. That is your earthen vessel. Yeah. <laughs> the excellency of the power is of God. Yes. The anointing, the unction from the Holy One that resides in you. And, and so the reason Hallelujah. why all of this is, is Thank right you, there. Lord. The treasure that is in, in earthen vessels. Hallelujah. Now, first of all, when I look at this, it pulls me to First Corinthians. Forgive me, Kitchen. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now, Romans chapter 8 is, is a, is a <laughs> I think every believer should read Romans chapter 8 like a million mm. times. But it says this, it says there is therefore now no condemnation. So yeah, we are talking about being perplexed, but we are not talking about condemnation. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So we ought to be walking through these things, head high, shoulder high, you know, <laughs> we adjust our posture. Yeah. We are not of them that lose. Mm -mm. No? That's not our portion. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. There's a different conversation happening here. Yeah. Right? Okay, so this is Romans chapter 8. Now, do you notice when you go further in Romans chapter 8, we are told, let, let me just let me just read that. My God, this is this is powerful. This is powerful. We have the Spirit of God in verse 26. Who helpeth our infirmities. Yes. So we are not in a single-handed battle. This is not a single-handed battle. Mm -mm. So yeah, believers encounter battles, but it's not a single-handed thing. Mm -hmm. You are not fighting by yourself. You have the Spirit of God who is helping. Let's read it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth. 
He is the other person doing the other thing. Amen. Right? That which you can't yeah. do, he is able to do. Amen. Right? That's what the word of God says. He helpeth our infirmities. Now, uh, um, um, some versions talk about shortcomings, weaknesses, mm -hmm. limitations. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. This is the most dangerous thing that should happen to any child of God. You are in problems. You have problems. You have things going on. You don't know how to pray. You are a dead man walking. Mm. But know the spirit. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, Ooh. Jesus. But know the spirit. Yes. The spirit. He is the secret weapon that no one knew about. <laughs> My God, the spirit. Come on. Listen, guys. You know, when things really go rough, invoke the spirit. That's right. You know? That's there's right. no there's no better way of saying it than invoke. Thank you, Jesus. You know, just summon him from wherever he may be. Yes. And watch and see how the spirit of God comes into the situation and begins to change things. Yeah, I get it. We can see the blood of Jesus. Why do you think people say I've I've done everything I can do? It's because you are the one doing it. Ooh. Right? It's because you're the one I'm doing messy. it. <laughs> tell, tell the Holy Spirit. Look, look, he's not doing guesswork. No. Well, let's try this. Let's see where that's going to work. Let's try this. Let's see where it's going to work. Let's try this. What? You think God is doing trial and error? <laughs> he's way too perfect to look like trial and error. Mm -hmm. We must employ him in matters of life. Amen. Amen. We must get him involved in the things that concern us. And that is how he gets to perfect them. And so the secret weapon this is this guy right here right my 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 Thank so you. when the word of god says all of creation is waiting mm -hmm. you know eagerly for the manifestation of the sons of god it is not your manifestation that's why god said to me he said i, I don't want your expression <laughs> yeah, right i want my expression yes. give the people my expression express my word the to word, the people the word and they will hear me speaking to them Amen. you bring your own expressions they will hear you talking, and you cannot change anyone. I said, yes, Father. So that's what God is saying to us, right? Okay. Yeah, it is true. They are all waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, but it is not the sons of God by themselves. Right. It is with the secret weapon, the Holy Ghost. That's right. Right? And when the Holy Spirit comes to the scene, in private or in public, He will help our shortcomings. He will become the addition to our shortcomings. Amen. Right? Yes. He will perpetuate our confusion oh, and create boldness where stupidity was found. Mm. This, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit coming in Peter's life. He's no longer the same Peter who denied Jesus. Right. It is now the Peter through whom 3,000 people gave their, their, their lives to the Lord. Amen. And before people could blink, 5,000 were coming. Wonderful Jesus. This is, it is only in Christ Jesus <laughs> okay. that these kind of things happen. Only in Christ Jesus. Because clearly, mm -mm, Holy Spirit has taken over. Yeah. Peter has changed. So I'm, I'm, you know, Pastor Pauline, I, I, I don't know what, what, what people's expectations are, but this is how I'm looking at it in my head, right? I am the woman that Jesus is saying he needs must go through Samaria. Come on. Right? Uh -huh. I am thinking I'm headed for an encounter. In fact, I don't even know what the word encounter means. <laughs> I'm going to carry water. From a, and, and from, Jesus, a well. from a well and Jesus is saying <laughs> I'll meet you where you're needed right so God schedules it because this oh. is how God meets people at the gas station this yes. is how God meets people at the supermarket this is how God meets people at the hospital Jesus. right God can meet you anywhere. anywhere you're standing at the traffic light you're thinking I'm about to negotiate a right turn and that is God's way of telling you that it's time to make a turn in your life. You were not preparing. You were not planning. You did not fast. You did not pray to hear his voice. And then he just shows up and tells you the thing that totally changes you inside out. But that's him, right? I must needs go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. And then you're busy carrying water. You don't know what is coming your way. He comes and sits there and says, mm -hmm. but if you knew who was talking to you, if you just knew who was talking <laughs> to you. If only you knew. You would have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. 
You know, first of all, this, if you begin to process this kind of things, they are crazy. You know, you know that, like, they are like, the ways of God are past finding. Yes. I don't know why, but just, just now I'm thinking. When did you give your life to the Lord? When did God put it in your heart that you should go around ministering from door to door? Right? How did he move me, me, from wherever I was? And, according to me, I'm visiting a friend. <laughs> How all of these things fell right on time and then you and I met. That is called insane. <laughs> right? <laughs> As if it's not enough. He tells me where you stay without any physical conversation. L Child of God, listen, I've got to tell you this. This God that we are dealing with is another kind of <laughs> being. Because God will move you in the heart mm. of your unconsciousness and bring you into destiny. And you will look at it and you know very oh, well there is no really way on the face of the earth mind. that you can explain what just happened. Right? There's no way you can explain it. I mean, I know some of you are listening to us right now. You're thinking, oh, you know. Yeah, but God will give you precious promises. God will give you precious, precious promises, promises. So that you can be a partaker of his divine nature. Yes. Hey! I hope you understand that the nature of God also involves... The atmosphere of God. Yes. The character of God. Yes. Right? Yes. You will come into God's charisma. Mm. Right? God's manifestations. Oh, God's charisma. Okay. You will come into God's manifestations. You will come into his expressions. Woo! Come on, beautiful. You know to talk about the charismatic gifts. Mm -hmm. God's charisma. How God shows himself. You will come into that and God is saying, you know, I like the fact that you came. You know, I kept something for you. It's a surprise. Mm. Hey, hey. Whoa. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. <laughs> wonderful Jesus. So, that's what the word of God says. Likewise, the spirit also helps us in our infirmities. For we don't know how to pray as we are supposed to. As we are. But the spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings. Which cannot be uttered. Wow. Really? This is deep. Right? Okay. Even as we look at this, the word of God now goes further and says in verse 34, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Come on. So just think about it. Who is he that condemneth? <laughs> it is Christ that died. So that problem that seems to be overwhelming you is just joking. When Jesus' time will come, when Christ's time will come, uh, then we will know who it is that owns you. Because he will come and say, please move. Hmm. In fact, at the sight of him, at the sight of him, things change. You know how the word of God says in the book of Psalms, at the sight of the children of God, the sea, <laughs> the sea fled. The sea fled. <laughs> and we, we, you know, we, we say that Moses you know, split the sea. Yeah. But at the sight of the children of God, the sea fled. It is interesting what God has prepared mm. for his children. And so the word of God continues to say this. Mm. Of course, it is also Christ who is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also what? Maketh intercessions for us. So now we have been shown in the same chapter of the word of God that the Holy Spirit is interceding. Now we are seeing that Jesus, Jesus also Christ is interceding. interceding. Wow. We are in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> we are in good hands. This is good. This is good, child of God. This is good. Then it says in verse 35, and I think this is really profound and changes everything. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now, now I, I get it. I get it that we are perplexed on every side. I get it that people don't love us. I get it that people are persecuting us. I get, I get that. I get that. But I want you to see 
that alongside the persecution, the love of God is, over, is overwhelming. Come on. Amen. Right? Yes. The love of God is overwhelming. It is overwhelming. It, it, says, it says, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Isn't it, Pastor Pauline, this is, this is just so interesting. That one who got clothes that were borrowed smiles more than the one who spent to buy because sometimes you think it is what you have that makes you happy no it is happy people who give expression to the things they have oh my god you you, you have to say that again <laughs> you have to say that again yeah. oh lord because sometimes jesus <laughs> That's, that's how it looks like sometimes, like, no, I need to buy this and buy this and do this and do this to be happy. No, 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 no. Happy people give a beautiful expression, expression to the things that matter. Oh, my goodness. Right? You see someone, yes. you see someone driving their vehicle, you get upset in yours. Because, <laughs> because you are not... You... I don't know, but... <laughs> God is helping us. You get upset in yours. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at them and say, why, why are they dancing like that? Why are they doing all of that? And the person is not, they don't even care because the, the love of God is overwhelming. Yes. The, the joy of the Lord. In fact, if you think they're an unbeliever, copy from them. Exactly. Co copy the joy. The joy. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it and say, wow, if he can be happy, I can be. Yes. Right? Okay, so we are told tribulation. But I like that happy people give expression oh, yes. to the things that they have. Yeah. What's the point? <sighs> when, when, when all is well, you eat your food differently. No, the food did not change. <laughs> it's not the food that changed. It's not the food that changed. <laughs> Why do people remember restaurants they went to where they had, shall I say, Oh, a wonderful time. There were conversations. They were laughing. In fact, there's a restaurant that I remember. I, 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 I kind of wonder, why do I even think about you? I don't like your food. You know, but it's like, no, it is the moment we spend there. Yeah, like, I'm thinking, yeah. oh, it, there were great conversations around the table. We had all of this. And I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, why were we missing a good meal alongside this whole thing, you know? <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's just something. Yeah. So if, if you behave as if you have been dipped in pickle juice, nobody's going to help you bring a smile to your face. You have to decide and, and be in the joy of the Lord. The word yes. of God says we are perplexed, but not. Right. So it is not whether things happen to you or not. It is what you do with the things that are happening Come to you. On. What is your response to yes. the things that are happening to you? Whatsoever is born of God overcome the yes. world. And this is the victory that overcome the world. Even, even our, our faith, faith, child of God. Even our faith. Even our faith. Can, you, can you be in a place of joy even if you haven't eaten? <laughs> I, I know. They used to say, you know, hungry man is a, he's he's an, an angry, angry man. man. <laughs> and then you took that saying and wore it on your head. The hungry man is an angry man. The hungry man is an angry man. And then you want to eat everyone raw because you haven't eaten. What? Come on. Right? If a, if a hungry man is an angry man, then you will never fast. Oh. <laughs> Right, because if you are fasting, you'll be angry instead. Well, you will look like what hungry. Isaiah 58 says. You're, 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 you're fasting, fasting for strife. For strife. <laughs> you're fasting for strife. Um, are you okay? Is everything all right? I'm fasting. Yeah. Hey, brother, sister, that's okay. Let's leave it. <laughs> we made a mistake to come Just and go visit and you. Eat. <laughs> Just go Just and eat. That, no, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just go and eat because uh, apparently it's not working. <laughs> Whew, thank you, hallelujah. It, it is it is really interesting, you know, what 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 we learn, you know, as we deal with with the word of God, that you know, how we, we grow in the word of God because we are told clearly, he says, Well, uh, who shall separate us from the love of mm. Christ? Right? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, right? Mm -hmm. Or sword. If I, I was listening to this guy the other day. I mean, I, I'm telling myself that he thinks he's a, 
he's a comedian, you know, and that's okay. So he's talking about what is happening in some areas where there is serious persecution against Christians. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to him. And then he said, I'm really amazed that as you guys are fellowshipping over here, you're having a great time. People are in church. Look at how the church is full. But where I'm coming from, where there's persecution, let me show you how people walk. So he said, he said people are done walking because now their pace has increased. They are between running and, and walking. <laughs> so I was laughing at this thing that this guy was saying. But he got to this point where he said, you know, when people are sitting and facing the, the pastor, first of all, they, they, they had to add the, do the doors to churches because they are not sure where the, the persecutors will come in and, and what door they have to run out from. Mm -hmm. But they have to make sure that there's enough uh, um, egress, you know, so that, you know, they can run. So while, while service is going on, he said, as the pastor is giving scriptures, the members of the congregation are looking at the pastor, uh, to, uh, you know, to catch his, his reaction in case a strange person comes in through the doors. And so if the pastor behaves like he's about to run, everybody in that church just leaves. And, and there is no telling when they, they do um, closing prayer because you never know how long the service is going to take. So he was saying all of this, he said, so when I look at you guys, I see that you don't appreciate what you have. And he, you know, he was mm -hmm. using comedy to say all of this, th these things. But the point here is, we need to be able to appreciate where God has us. Right? Yes. We need to be able to appreciate where God has us. The word of God says, mm. as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors yes. through him that loved us. Amen. So 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 there has to be a level of confidence in the things of God. There has to be a level of confidence in the love of God Amen. to see that irrespective of where we are, love is the reason why we will have our next victory. Amen. For he who loved us enough to die for us will not abandon us. Come on. Right? Yes. When any of these things are or, or, yeah, when any of these things shows up in our lives. So, yes, in Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. For I am persuaded, yes. verse 38, persuaded. that neither death nor life, I am persuaded. And, and so, our persuasion is in the love of God. Because as long as the Lord loves His people, something that is not expiring anytime soon, <laughs> right? I used to like the, the concept that God has grace to love. He has abundance of grace mm -hmm. in his immortal life to love this mortal behavior <laughs> as he's working with us to get us into the beauty of, 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 of immortality. And so he says, so I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height nor depth, nor any, nor any other creature, creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. What an exciting way to finish a chapter. It is just beautiful. So, ladies and gentlemen, understand this. The love of God that passes all, all understanding, understanding. Right? Shall what? Woo. Keep our hearts and minds. Shall mind. keep us. Keep in our Christ hearts. Jesus. Keep our minds. The, but, but that's the power of it, though. Yes. That the love of God is able to keep. Yes. So when you remember that God loves you, you calm down. So there could be a storm, things are raging, you know, you're wondering what, what, what's, like, what's becoming of your life. All of that is happening. And then you just remember, Jesus loves you. And it's like, ooh, very soothing water is just poured upon you. And you come into a place of shalom. Ooh, instantly, nothing is missing, nothing is broken. <laughs> you look around and you don't see the problems anymore. <laughs> I was in the midst of the storm and I thought I was taking a ride. Thank you, Lord. That becomes your Ooh. testimony. That becomes your testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That becomes your testimony. It, it, it was, 
Oh my God, it, it, it is just amazing. It is just amazing. It is just amazing. Because one can be th thinking, oh, people are saying there's an earthquake or there was an earthquake. I don't know. I never, I, I don't know. On the contrary, I saw things in the spirit falling in place. I ought to go and check what's mine. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, let's understand something. The love of God will give you a perception that man cannot fabricate. Amen. Man cannot fabricate. And so, yes, Jesus met oh, the woman hallelujah. at the well. Her story was changed. She went back into the city and she became the one who announced yes. that there was a man of God around. They come, and, around. See come the man. and see the man. And of course, you know, the rest is documented. And so as we look forward to wins, ladies and gentlemen, as we look forward to wins, um, Women in Ministry Summit, there's, there's quite a conversation that is going around that. Pictures are going around, you know. As we look forward to the Women in Ministry Summit, um, uh, for which men are also invited, okay? Yes. We are contemplating the love of God, what He has oh, done yeah. for those who love him and what he continues to do. What a blessing to know Christ Jesus. Mm. And, and, and better yet, to be known of him. To be known of him. So we bless the Lord for his faithfulness. And it's such a privilege and an honor to, to serve this great God. Yes. It's a privilege. I, I was sharing with the church, I think it was two Sundays ago, about a post that I saw and it hit me hard. The, the person, the, the quote, I, I, I'll paraphrase it because I don't remember exactly how it was, it was said, but the, the person was saying, when, if, an, if an earthly authority calls for you to render services unto him in any capacity, you consider it an, an honor. <laughs> and a privilege. For example, if the vice president of your nation or the president of your nation invites you or uh, employs you, asks for you to come and serve in the government under that um, authority, you consider it a privilege and an honor. And you will be so grateful for the opportunity if you're supposed to start work at 8 o'clock in the morning, you will be there at 7 o'clock in the parking lot just so you are um, sure you don't get stuck in traffic. That is how excited you are about the opportunity and you consider it a privilege and an honor. So why is it that when God calls us, we call it a sacrifice? <laughs> Deception. Why is it that when the king right. of all kings cause you to to work for him in his government you consider it a sacrifice meanwhile the government of your nation calls you to work and you consider it a privilege well, and point. an honor how else can the devil make sure that he introduces labor in the equation before you even start my god you know he's gonna come to you and say oh it's too much labor, yes. so it's a sacrifice. I'm, I'm really just doing this, you know, because it's the Lord. Yes, I'm really suffering for the Lord. So not many people are excited being in ministry. Right. Because it has a connotation of sacrifice. Yeah. You're really, 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 really suffering for the Lord. Yeah. It's an honor to serve the King of Kings hey. and Lord of Lords. Wow. He's the highest authority there is. It is a privilege yeah. to be enlisted into this military Amen. where the captain of the host is Jesus Christ Come himself. On. Come on. It Come is an honor and it's a privilege. Amen. So walk in the consciousness and the awareness of this truth that you are serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are enlisted into this amazing military. The best there is. <laughs> ever, ever. Ever, ever, Has ever. Been currently is ever will be <laughs> in the name of jesus amen yeah amen. well wims is is 
the countdown is <laughs> three days to go. So, so a few things, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, on Friday, yes, you're sir. more than welcome to access the premises as as early as eleven o'clock. Okay. A.M. Yes, AM. So neat. wherever you're traveling from, that's 11 neat. AM, you're, you're more than Ooh. welcome to come. But just so you know, just so you know, just so you know, on Friday, don't be eating cookies. I know you're traveling. <laughs> don't be eating cookies. We are fasting on Friday. We okay? are fasting on Friday. We are fasting on Friday. Um, so, okay, so, so let, let me give you guys the program. Hold yes, on, hold on, hold please. on. Let me give you the program. Let me give you the program. Because the schedule. Let me give you That's what, right, what Pastor Janet. Like. Looking forward to hugging you. Yes, Pastor D, we are proud to serve. That's right. Let me give right. you guys the schedule. The schedule. Let give me show you guys the schedule. the schedule. I'll give you guys the schedule right about now. <laughs> so, so today, today is Tuesday. I'm going to give you guys the schedule for today, Tuesday. Right now, this is the Kanye household of faith. It is part of the schedule for wins, right? Because right. you have to prepare, you know, to... So it all starts out today. All right, we just so. had the word of God. Mm -hmm. And at midnight over here, so that is in about 2 hours, 30 minutes, 2 mm -hmm. hours, 20 minutes, we are going to be praying all night, all the way till the morning. Okay, we are just going to be in a place of prayer. Listen, guys, I'm telling you, this is the schedule for wings. Yes, it this is. This is the schedule for wings. Today, wherever you are, engage in prayer. Okay, <laughs> engage in prayer. We are praying tonight. <laughs> So, so, so according to Pastor Peter's schedule, Wims has started. Oh yes, man, Wims had started a long time ago. You know, Wims had started a long time ago. So, so today we are praying this night. You know, from midnight all the way till the morning. Okay, so I understand one after twelve is morning. I get that. <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying that for for the next five hours we will be in a place of prayer. Mm -hmm. Five six hours we will be in a place of prayer. I'm going to tell you something deeper. I'm going to tell you something deeper about this something schedule. Something deeper. So that's Tuesday's schedule. Then Wednesday, right? Wednesday, where is where is Noella? Noella, you've got to come here. Uh, by the way, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. So beginning 9 a.m. So you're going to have some time to chillax, to do whatever it is that you're doing, take showers. And do. 9 a.m., we are getting into prayer. We are going to pray, 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 and just remain in a place of prayer mm -hmm. from 9 till 12 noon. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to take like a little break, meaning walk around, run to the bathroom, and come right back. So this is an all-day prayer. Wednesday is all-day prayer. So literally, we are beginning our prayers at 12 midnight tonight mm -hmm. into tomorrow. We are praying all the way till the evening, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Wednesday, which is tomorrow. It shall be glorious. The devil shall see pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Wings, here we come. <laughs> and then on Thursday, <laughs> on Thursday night, so, so when we finish our all-day prayer on, on, um, on Wednesday, we are going to close, okay. right? And then on Thursday we shall have Kange household night, of faith. we are going to have Kange household of faith. And then from midnight, we are going to pray into the early hours of sunrising in the morning. We are going to do that. And then we can just wake up, get ourselves ready. It's already Friday. <laughs> yes, yeah. And hit the road. And hit the road. And go enjoy wings. And so, we are fasting. And we are fasting. So don't, 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 don't be doing cookies. This is not when you should go and look for, you know, the bakery and find out what is over there, what's that smell, so you can find out by tasting. No, do not find out anything by tasting. Leave that till after whims. Listen, guys, the point is this season is so pivotal for you. Yes. It is so pivotal for you that... By the way, there's a video that's going to be coming up and it's going to help you guys see from the time when prophetic words began to go up about the rise of the Debras. So you be, you know, you'll be able to trail that and, and see what God is doing in your own life as a person. And by the way, you know, 
in, in the days of the New Testament, there's no Gentile, no Greek, no Jew, neither male nor female. So, my brother, you can adopt Deborah today. That's yes, good for you. we are the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. We are rising as the Deborahs. So, that's what the Word of God is saying, and that's what the schedule is like. And so, when you come for wings, okay, when now we meet under the same roof for wings, mm -hmm. this is the schedule. I'm going to give you the schedule right now. Okay. I'm going to give you the schedule. All of Friday, we are going to be fasting. Don't worry, there is no soup. There is no, none of that. Okay? There's no nighttime no, no entertainment. No salad, no soup. No, no, no salad, no soup. No, no dessert. Tea, no. I mean, I can't let you have tea. Okay. You know, but you are not coming for tea, are you? No. Okay. You can drink all of your tea next week. <laughs> That's right. I mean, look at from the day you were born, you've been drinking tea. So, some things you don't do them because they haven't really taken you anywhere. Come on, guys. This is not about tea or coffee or... That's right. Can we drink yogurt? Stop it. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> so, so all of Saturday... All of, that's right. That's right. All of Friday, we are fasting. All of Saturday, we are fasting. All right? We are like Moses who went up the mountain. We are going to meet with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. If we go up the mountain, he's not there. He, he will come. <laughs> he will come. That's the plan. He's going to come and meet with us. That's the deal. We are going to be at Jesus' feet. Yes. Okay? Yes. And glean from the honey that flows out of him. Right? We yes. are going to glean from him. We are going to have a wonderful time. Yes. And, 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 and I, I seriously believe that during this few days, God is going to entrust. That word entrust has been oh, so magnified to me. God is going to entrust words to you. Words that will, oh my God, like entrust. Mm -hmm. And with these words, you will carry on amazing ministry after you come out of wings. Yes, yes. Okay? Um, I, I do understand that there are people who are going to come with, with you know, um, 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 containers of, of anointing oil. That's fine. Go ahead and come with it. Yes. We are going to pray for Stop that. Praying. You have handkerchiefs, yes. aprons. Bring them. Yes. We are going to pray for them. Seriously, okay? just have those things sit in the presence of yeah, the Lord. Yeah, let them sit in the in presence of God. In that glory atmosphere, yeah, things it shall will be powerful. happen. Yes. It shall be powerful. Yes. That's the reason why we don't have to be having yogurt conversation. What in the world? Right. The conversation is anointing oil. That's right. You should be asking questions like, um, can we bring oil so it can be prayed for? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. wings. Mm -hmm. Right? Can we bring aprons? Uh, can we bring our sick loved ones? Yeah, because there will be miracle signs and wonders yes, happening. Amen. Okay, there will be miracle signs and wonders happening, and God is going to do wonders. You should be asking questions like, um, "Are people going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost?" Yeah, mm -hmm. is wings. Yeah, right. Are we going to meet the Lord? Yes. Oh yes. Is wings. Okay, so that's the plan. We are coming to meet the Lord. It is going to be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Bring your oil. Bring all of that. We are going to pray for it, and. Um, um, God is going to be magnified Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So <clears throat> that's what the schedule is going to be like. Mm -hmm. Sunday, however, Sunday, we are going to have a huge family meal. We are yes, going to celebrate. We are going to feast. We are going to have a banquet on a Sunday. Banquet. It's going to be glorious. So for those of you who wanted to know what the schedule will look like, voila. You got it. That is the schedule. Amen. Now let me talk to you a little bit how the how lodging will look like for those of you who are lodging on site i need to talk to you about this because pastor peter <clears throat> just so you know will be managing this whole lodging it's not saga but you know lodging thing he's going to be right there he's going to say this is your room it's going to be the dormitory room. prefect <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's what's going to happen so 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 what is the point the, the point is this for those of you who come sooner, you have the opportunity of getting, the, the, you know, earlier lodging. And those of you who come later will notice that, you know, those who came sooner had more options than you did. Because, you know, when you come later on, they just say, here, this is where you sleep. And so that's where you're going to be sleeping. But we are going to do our best to make sure that you cannot hang around people you came with. Okay, we're going to do our best um, for
for you to to have that experience we are going to do our best not to take that experience from you amen we have a list we know those who you know signed up for lodging and we are going to make sure that you know we don't have some kind of double booking now i i, I learned that some of you have people uh, you know um who are not coming that you registered and uh, you're trying to put other people into those spaces no we are not switching names we are just going to go down the list and it's going to be first come first serve there are people on the waiting list right okay there are people on the waiting list believe us look at the conversations we are having okay okay there's a waiting <laughs> list and so we are going to be you know bringing in those who registered earlier on and their lodging wasn't guaranteed we are going to bring them in to fill in those spaces before your dilly darling person you know that you registered two days ago and you want them to take someone else's space so that's what that is going to look like listen guys the whole point here is come let's meet with the lord and and let's handle some of these petty things that affect people from accessing the glory up front okay yeah so that's what we and, and come with an open mind <clears throat> the most important thing you're supposed to bring is your heart yes so come ready to receive and be intentional to not allow anything like pastor Peter said the petty things to distract you from the real reason why you're coming so if you come when you come be ready to to accept whatever accommodation because we are not we are really not going there for vacation it's not it's not sightseeing it's not vacation we are coming there to meet with the lord some of you will not even have the luxury of sleeping so where they put you to sleep will be of no consequence because you will find yourself praying all night some of you will practically stay in the sanctuary praying you will just go to your room to shower and come back so sleeping it will be the least of your issues right. so when you have that mindset and you're, pop, you're you're intentional about coming like paul was saying to timothy endure hardness be ready for whatever you know that is one weekend that you have set aside to meet with god the bible says that jacob was left alone and he wrestled with god let this weekend be your your jacob becoming israel experience an encounter that will shift your life forever. So food, accommodation, uh, where to sleep, whether you are comfortable, whether you're sleeping next to somebody you know or you don't know, should be the list of your issues. Amen. You're coming to meet with Jehovah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, WIMS is going to be very exciting, right? So many new things to experience, especially new words from the Lord. Yes. Okay. So expect to hear God for yourself. Um, that's the plan, isn't it? That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's the plan. Come with your notebook. I, I, I have my notebook already. It's somebody was trying to touch it, said don't touch it. That's my Wim's notebook. Don't touch it. So God is going to help all of <laughs> us, right? It's gonna be beautiful. And um, so many things are going to happen. We are very excited that you're going to come. There are some of you. Who are going to be coming we've not seen you in a long time we're looking forward to the hogs yes. and the kisses and, and all of that is going to be beautiful i'm so looking forward to putting some faces to some names yes and some names uh, can get household faces. of faith family yeah looking forward to meeting some of you that we have not yet met physically praise and god. we know it's going to be a good time praise god. yes praise god. praise god now i know this is a women in ministry summit um do not be surprised if I, if I know that you are, of course, we know that ministers are the ones who are coming. You know that you are assigned to do something, maybe to collect offerings for the evening or to lead in prayer or mm -hmm. something. Don't say, oh, me, who, me, me, who, who else? You. <laughs> Amen. So let's, let, guys, let's just open ourselves up for the Lord. Um, um, in a vision that the Lord was giving me, I, I saw you know a locomotive a train it was moving and, and and this is going to i'm telling you this women in ministry summit will create in itself a gigantic move of god yes it, it, it is is going to be powerful mm -hmm. by the way there is a lady there is a lady you're planning on coming to the prayer summit 
you have been dealing with pain on your right side for a long time. You've been dealing with pain. But healing is waiting for you when you come to wings. Isn't Amen. that funny? That's kind of Amen. interesting. Thank you, Jesus. But we will hear your story. We will hear Thank what you, God Jesus. has done in your life. Because your healing will start even now. I see you dealing you. with some kind of, you know, body weakness also. Down your legs. You know, sometimes you, it's almost as if you will pass out. Uh, but God has healing for you. So many things Thank are going you, to be transformed in your life. So we're looking forward to the healing power of God moving yes. Um, and, yes. and touching the people of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen. We are very excited that you were part of the broadcast today. Thank you, Jesus. And so, um, God help Hallelujah. us. Hallelujah. Minister Obi is coming with his team for a table of exchange. So we are having our offerings tonight. You all have a wonderful night. And may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord cause you to increase, cause you to come into plenty. Yes. May the Lord cause you to have dreams and revelations. May the Lord give you stamina. Amen. May the Lord cause you to grow until you become everything that he has scheduled for your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All amen. right, guys. We are very glad that um, you are part of the broadcast. And we will be seeing you guys very soon, okay? God bless you and talk to you all later. Thank you for giving us access into your homes That's and right. we appreciate you for coming into ours. We may not have acknowledged you as individuals tonight, but you know you are always appreciated. And we thank you for your giving as well. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. God bless night. you. Good night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Oh, you are so gentle, that's right. so pure and, and so, so kind. kind. You will shine like the bright morning star. has been and he will continue to be mm -hmm. a good father. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Oh, for me, honestly, <laughs> I just keep thinking about what daddy was saying. How about that problems are our stepping stones. Come on. Because when you look at it as a stepping stone, mm. you're like, bring the problems on. You know, it's like the word they get for that this, when we're being given uh, the prayer topics, right. and you're saying, all that's happening right now will be a memory. Yeah. So if it's going to be a memory, yeah. use it as a stepping stone. Absolutely. And what are you supposed to focus on? The promises uh, of God. Yes. Why? Because they are a lifeline Come to on. our future. Because they are a lifeline to a our A lifeline future. to our future. So Hallelujah. it's not about, oh, what is happening 
around you right now. It's about the promises of God. Mm -hmm. The promises of God that say you are above and not beneath. So it doesn't matter what is happening and it feels like you're way under the, I don't know even how to say how under, but knowing that, wait, God has, there's a promise. Because yeah. whatever you're going through, there's a promise in the word of God that applies to that. Yes. So oh, yes. just search the word. Absolutely. Search the word and find that word and stand on yes. that promise. Amen. Amen. And don't back down. Because we have been told we push. Yes. Because you're pushing with the word. You're not yeah. doing it by yourself. Yeah. You're pushing with the word. Mm -hmm. Saying, but the word has said. Mm -hmm. The word says this. Period. <laughs> There's no arguments with that. Pastor Peter mentioned, God was telling him, don't go in with your expression. Don't yeah. go in with your opinions. Right. Go in with the way. Yeah. Right? He is the one who does the changing. Yes. yes. You know? And when the storm comes, ride the storm. Ride the storm. Ride it. Yes. In the midst of the storm, I thought I was on a ride. Just smooth sailing. <laughs> <laughs> smooth sailing. Yeah. So in this atmosphere, you have a way, you have yeah. had a way, yeah. and ways that have been spoken to you over time, right? Mm -hmm. So, as you are looking at your challenges, speak this, those ways that have been given to you, yes. those ways that God spoke to you directly mm -hmm. or indirectly, yeah. right? Those ways that are in the scriptures, mm -hmm. put your challenge down and slap it with the word of God. Yes. And as you are doing that, Put an offering yes. as a an altar yes. that God has said it and God will do it. Amen. 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 You want to pray for us? Well? Yes. Yes. And also, real quick, before we pray, um, one of the the scriptures that the man of God read was Romans eight, and he said he thinks every child of God should read that over and over again. Yeah. I'm suggesting the same thing. Mm -hmm. I am in love with Romans eight. Read it in the King James. Read it, and I remember one time. On a Sunday service, we read it in the message version, and we broke it down scripture, verse by verse by verse. And let me tell you something, reading it in those different versions, it just gives you a different translation every single time. So I would suggest the same, we would suggest the same thing. Go and meditate on Romans 8. Like literally, everybody that I speak to, I say read Romans 8, read Romans 8, and break it down. Don't, don't read it just to read it. Read it so that it can read you, and then you move forward. So... Anyway, offerings, I mean, let us pray again. Offering numbers 301-900-9102. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We cherish you. We reverence you, Father, for you are good. You are great and greatly to be praised. There is nobody like you. Father, we thank you because you have brought us thus far. We thank you, God, that as we lift up our offering unto you, God, that you, Father, will sanctify it, that you will honor it, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that we place it before you, oh God. It's just like the man of God said, we will make it an altar unto you, Father, believing, God, that as we plant this seed, Father, at your feet, Father, that we will see the manifestation of that seed in the name of Jesus. And we're even planting this seed towards this weekend. Father, we thank you that you have been pushing us and driving us and getting us excited for whims oh lord we thank you because you have so much in store for us and we know that your word says that the expectation of the righteous will not be cut off father we come to you with our dump trucks not our teacups yep. but our dump trucks we come with our capacities empty ready to be filled by you so father we thank you Thank you for recognizing our offering. Thank you for hearing our worship. Thank you for hearing our prayers. And we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 amen, amen. amen. Announcements. <laughs> you already know announcements. Good night. <laughs> oh, if you still want to come to Wings, please yes. go register. Boarding is, full, uh, is filled to capacity, yes. but you can still register. Get an Airbnb, get a hotel around. Our admins are very great at uh, providing information Absolutely. and they will get back to you. Yes. It's not too late. We look forward to seeing you on Friday. Woo! Have a good night.